Welcome to another episode of Therapy and Theology. I'm Lisa Turkhurst, joined today by Dr. Joel Mutamale and licensed professional counselor, Jim Kress. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited about our topic today. We're talking about moving through the impact of trauma. Here's something I want you to keep in mind. Every time we experience a wounding or a betrayal or a trauma, traumatic event in our life, there's two parts. There's the fact of what happened. That's the initial hurt that you've experienced or the initial rejection that you've experienced. So there's the fact, then there's also the impact. So the fact happens, but the impact you're gonna have to move through and it could leak into your life for quite a while. So today we wanna talk about what are those stages? Um, Just like we've heard there's stages to grief and oftentimes trauma, moving through the impact of trauma, moving through the impact of the grief that comes from a loss, either because of death or because of someone walking away or an ending of a relationship, um, those things mirror each other. Mm -hmm. The the grief Mm -hmm. from a loss and the grief of a trauma, and sometimes the trauma is because of loss in our life. So today I wanna talk about these stages because I've been through some significant trauma. If you've been watching therapy and theology for a while, um, I've been very upfront and honest. Sometimes I feel like Joel is here to bring the theological depth and Jim is here to bring the therapeutic wisdom and I'm here to bring the issues. (laughs) So uh, we just make our really good team here. But I've been through significant trauma and um, and loss. Mm -hmm. And um, I know Jim, we've worked together so much. Jim is my personal counselor. And then Joel is my personal (laughs) theologian, really. Um, Joel and I work together every day. um, And he does the theological research and study. And and we spend many, many hours studying the Bible together. But both of you are familiar, very, very familiar with what I've walked through. And Jim, you've called divorce before the death of a marriage. And I do feel like I've not only walked through the traumatic events surrounding what caused the death of this marriage, but also having to learn to accept it and move on. And the grief has at times been pretty intense because it is a loss. So whatever the impact is that you're processing or you're walking through, most of us have some kind of hurt, wounding, Mm -hmm. possibly even trauma that we are facing in front of us. And even if you haven't had something dramatic happen in your life, I would suspect you're grieving something or you're trying to move through something that maybe you had an expectation of a certain relationship and that relationship isn't playing out like you thought it would. Or Mm -hmm. maybe you thought you'd be at a certain point in your life right now. And maybe you haven't hit what you feel like is that place that you thought you would be when you're 25, 35, 45, 55, whatever it is. Um, Or maybe life just has not turned out like you thought it would. You thought A plus B should equal C, and you did A and you did B, and then C doesn't at all look like you thought it would. So whatever the fact of the grief that you're carrying or the fact of the hurt or pain is, I think we all share that in common. Mm -hmm. So what can be disillusioning sometimes is where the feelings, the impact has hit us yeah. of what we're walking through and the feelings feel so overwhelming. It just feels like a an ocean that we're having to wade through. And unless we can see some mile markers, it's easy to sort of get stuck, yeah. it's easy to get lost, or it's easy to get hopeless yeah. because we just don't know how to do this or what to look for. We don't have these mile markers to indicate like what we're moving through. And I think the question I can find myself asking is, is this normal? Is this normal? Is this normal? I think so many times, Jim, I show up and I just want to say, okay, this is what I'm feeling right now. Is this normal? And I sort of brace for Jim to say, no, that's actually psychologically awful. But he's never said (laughs) that, you know? You're very patient in helping me Mm -hmm. move through. And that is 
what we're doing here. Yeah. We're not, we can't just get over it. Yeah. Prepositions to, matter. Yes. We've talked about that offset here. That's that prepositions right. Prepositions matter. So instead of trying to get over it or, or fast track it or get around it, um, we're going to have to walk through it. And as we walk through it, what are these stages that we're going to experience? So that's what I want to talk about today. You guys good for that? I I'm hope so. And by the way, normal seriously is just a setting on your washer, dryer, or dishwasher. Thank you. It's, it's like, what, what is normal? There is a reality, I think, of a healthy normal and, and at times maybe an unhealthy normal that maybe you've been in relationships like that or in one now. And there's a new normal that I get to literally create in cooperation with God and in community with other people who are healthy to create, this is my new normal. Mm -hmm. And I want to, as we always do, offer hope that you get to create a new normal and walk in it. I like that because it indicates that we're moving forward, yeah. not backward. Because mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes I can find myself just so resistant, like, I don't want all these changes. Right. I want to go back to what was normal. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, when you have walked through significant trauma, you really don't want to go back. What you really want is to move forward. And so I like defining it as we're moving toward a new normal, not returning to what was normal. And the beauty of through in that preposition that we've talked so much about, again, off air here, but what we've talked about is through is always implying going through something forward, ultimately. When you think the average person thinks think of the preposition through, they're thinking move forward, not going backwards. It might feel like at times that you're taking three steps forward and two back, but overall we are moving through. There is a forward progress. All right, I can't help myself. You guys keep jumping through <laughs> with the doctor. propositions and, and all this. Here so let me just do a little <laughs> bit of background work and I wanna ask a question, what kind of people are we gonna be? Are we gonna be an ek type of people or a dia type of people? And okay, before you, you know get you're lost, have to spell this, yep, right? Ek is the Greek preposition e k, and it means um, out of or from. Okay. Um, and I think like when it comes to trauma, when it comes to hurt, when it comes mm -hmm. to pain, we all want to move out of and from that into something else, and yeah. and that's great. Now, here's what I'm worried about, and, and I think this is the the background of our conversation is at what cost. Um, yeah. And by what means are we going to do this? And so throughout the New Testament, one of the most important prepositions is the preposition dia. And so ek comes after dia comes before. Yep. And dia is the preposition through. So the Old Testament was translated in, in Hebrew originally. And then it was translated, written in Hebrew, and then it was translated into Greek. And that's known as the Septuagint. The Septuagint. Now here's what's so incredible. The, the preposition that is present almost everywhere, I mean, we could do an entire study on this by itself, is dia, the preposition through. The people of Israel have to move through the wilderness in order to get to the promised land. The people of Israel have to move through the Red Sea to escape the tyranny of Pharaoh. You see, Jesus has to go through Samaria in the yeah. New Testament mm -hmm. in order to get to the well in John chapter 4 so he can have this catalytic moment with the Samaritan woman who is hated by society but becomes the first evangelist of the gospel. Um, and so never do we find, anytime the Israelites try to go around what God has in store for them, actually more trauma is, a, is, is awaiting them. Yeah. And so um, I think it's really important that we want to, yes, be an ek people, but we can't get out of or from unless we do the hard work of going through. I think in some of my prayers early on, it, it was God deliver me from. Mm -hmm. Like I want a miraculous, like I'm in this extreme pain and so God, in order to deliver me from, I want it immediate. I want the big miracle. I want you to take this away. I want you to change that person in an instant. I, I want you to make the circumstances better. I want you to bring me to a place where things feel level and not so hard. But so many times when I read the stories of the Bible, there are those miraculous, sure. instantaneous um, uh, miracles that we see. But what I see more often, instead of delivering from like a miracle in an instant, it's a walking with through. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, and what God has really been showing me is, Lisa, I want to walk with mm -hmm. you through this. And um, it's step by step and it's day by day. 
But a big benefit of that is deepening in my relationship. Is there's a, there's a deepening in my relationship with the Lord even. Yeah. yeah. And um, and there's a newfound dependence on Him. I didn't need Him to be my husband until I had no husband. Mm-hmm. I, I I didn't need that that I didn't need Him to to like be my closest companion until I realized. I need him to be my closest companion. Yeah. And it's not that I didn't need him before like that. It's that I didn't realize the depth yes. of my need. And that, that doesn't make it any easier. Right. Um, sometimes I still like, just take it away. Please just take <laughs> away this pain, you know? But I'm discovering what God has, has been doing with me is like walking with me through. So let's, uh, let's get to some of these stages or these mile markers. So when, and I'm going to have to put on my glasses because, you know, old eyes. Okay. So when trauma happens, like I said, there's the fact of what happens. And then there's this impact yeah. that, mm-hmm. that is going to occur to us. We're going to feel the impact, but then there's going to be stages as it unfolds in our life. And we want to know that we're moving toward healing yeah. and that we really are moving through this to a place of even greater hope and maybe even purpose in all this pain that we're Mm -hmm. walking through. And so I felt like it was good and and we prepared in advance to give these mile markers. Now, this isn't an exclusive exhaustive list, but it is a good list. And I feel like I've personally experienced it and you guys um, have added to it. And I I think it's just going to be super helpful. So at first, we're going to experience the sense of loss. Mm -hmm. Life was this way and now it is no longer this way. Mm -hmm. Or it could be like for me, you know, I had what I felt like was a solid family unit of a husband and a wife and the children lived within that and that felt so good and right and safe to me. And then when I had to finally accept that this, this marriage had died, and that there were certain realities that made it unsustainable for Mm -hmm. me to stay and and honestly unbiblical for me to stay, there was such a deep loss. I mean, it was just overwhelming to me. And certainly if if you've experienced, you know, I know you experienced the death of your cousin through an extreme tragedy of, of, you know, she was brutally murdered and the extreme loss of that. But like I said, it could also be the loss of, expectations, the loss of where you thought you would be. So that's the first. It's like this feeling of hurt and realization of loss. Mm -hmm. After that, you know, at first, the the first mile marker is shock. Like it's just hard to believe. I think that's really good. Let me just really quick locate this first uh, situation of loss theologically to Genesis 3. And I know Jim and I, we were talking earlier about this. Um, Genesis 3, there's a theologian, his last name is Plantinga, and he describes that the trauma of Genesis 3 as being um, at one point the presence of thousands of strands that connected creation and humanity to the uh, to the person of Christ like like we're we're all connected to the life of Christ mm-hmm. and then when sin hits it's almost like a have you ever had a rubber band you know and you've taken a rubber band you've stretched it out and then you know there's this tension point that if you go any further it's going to snap and it's going to sting somebody yeah that's what happened at the fall. These thousands of connected um, realities into the life of Jesus were, were stripped in a second and snapped that caused trauma. It caused trauma emotionally, it caused trauma physically, and it caused trauma spiritually. And so in that very first moment in Eden, we actually find an, an incredible amount of loss. And often, least and Jim, what I think we don't do is we think about it from the human perspective of what Adam and yeah. Eve lost. I want to for a second just humanize and just kind of go back to, well, God is a good father who loves his people. Can we just talk about the loss that Yahweh had of walking into the garden and not having Adam and Eve there? the silence of a conversation that used to be there that is no longer, the presence of footprints and walking and working in Eden that is now still and and absent. And so here, right away, we find the presence of this very first loss, and that is a shocking reality. It is. And so that loss is shock, 
it, it's just like, I just didn't, either I didn't see it coming or I don't know what to do with this feeling. Okay. And so that's the shock, which often can also hold hands with either the intensity of, of the shock and just the feeling of overwhelming emotion, or it can play out on the other side, an absolute numbness right. of, of just like mm -hmm. no emotion at all and almost feeling like I'm gonna resist feeling one feeling because mm -hmm. if I feel one feeling, it may open me up to feeling yeah. all of the feelings. So it could be that the loss triggers a numbness or it could an overwhelming sense of emotion. But regardless, there sometimes, a lot of times is this denial, this denial like I can't believe this is happening or I can't accept the emotions yeah. around this. I just don't even know what to do with it. And Jim, I know you often, anytime I say the word can't, you sometimes <laughs> add in what? Won't, it's the can't won't principle. I say can't, but I mean won't often. Mm -hmm. And with this, uh, you've alluded to it that the denial that we all will have from time to time in our lives, if you look at it, it's pretty easy to see you're not really denying the event because it's hard even with the death of death of a relationship, a relationship ending at any level, friendship, any level at all, marriage included, or someone literally dies, you, you know somewhere in your mind they died or this relationship ended or this person did this to me that hurt. It's the denial of the emotion of what does it mean back to impact what is the impact on me just to say, this happened? That's where we do fact impact. Fact, I just gotta say, and we've said it many times here, that mental health and spiritual health that we all want is a commitment to reality at all costs. It is not just a commitment to reality. What will it cost me? So again, the denial is really denying some of the emotions and thoughts around it because I just don't wanna face it. And you've alluded to, I can numb out. Mm -hmm. You'll only be able to numb out. There's only so much soul anesthesia. You can only numb out so long and eventually something will awaken you. You can go right back to numbing or go back to sleep again. But numbing is very hard to stay numb, minus a lot of drugs and alcohol and acting out, right? Very hard to stay numb.